بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر فرینڈس کولیگس نائس ٹو ٹو ٹاک ٹو یو ٹو ڈے آن لائن بیکاز آف ریزنز وی آل آر ویل اویئر آف مائی نیم یو مینی آف یو مے بی نوئنگ ضابطہ خان شنواری آئی ایم دی وائس چیئر آف یونیسکو ورلڈ کمیشن فار ایتھکس اینڈ سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی اینڈ پریزیڈنٹ نیشنل کونسل فار تیب بیسائڈ ادر تھنگس دیٹ آئی ڈو ریمین ان قائد اعظم یونیورسٹی ایز ڈین آلسو وائس چانسلر آف کوہارٹ اینڈ ادر یونیورسٹیز بریف انٹروڈکشن اینڈ دین ٹوڈے وٹ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک ٹو یو ایز ریگارڈنگ دس نیو پینڈیمک دیٹ وی آل ہیومنز آر فیسنگ اینڈ ہاؤ کین وی ریئلی ہیو سم بیسک ٹپس آر دیٹ وی کین سیو گارڈ آور کمیونٹی اینڈ وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ کمیونٹی پلیز ڈو ریمبر دیٹ وی آر ڈفرینٹ دین یوروپ اینڈ امیرکا اٹس پاکستان اینڈ پاکستان وی نو دا لٹریسی ریٹ وی نو دا پیپل دیٹ دا وے دے آر لیونگ سو دیر فور وی ہیو ٹو ٹارگیٹ دوز کائنڈ آف آڈینسیز اینڈ ٹوڈے مائی دس پریزنٹیشن ول بی سارٹ آف ایڈریسنگ مائی یوتھ ٹو ٹیک اٹ آن اینڈ جس طرح وی ٹاک ان آور اون ریلیجن کہ یہ نیکی ہے پہنچاؤ آگے دس بندوں کو اور وہ آگے دس کو اور پہنچائے تو مائی ٹاک ول بی مینلی آن 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 ٹو تھری آسپیکٹس ون پرائمری ہیلتھ کیئر سسٹم ٹو ہربل میڈیسن تھری اے لٹل بٹ آف کیریکٹر بلڈنگ آئی ریمین پروفیسر فار مینی ایئرس سو مائی آئی یوز ٹو 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 ڈو کریکٹر بلڈنگ آف مائی اسٹوڈنٹ سو مائی ٹاک یوزولی ہیو ٹین پرسینٹ آف مائی ٹاک از اے کائنڈ آف کریکٹر بلڈنگ آف مائی ینگ آف مائی یوتھ بیکاز Pakistan desperately needs change managers and we are if we want to bring a change we need change managers unfortunately we are we we, we have paucity of change managers and even do if we have change managers this this party that is in power came on the slogan of change but they don't have trained change managers so as a professor I I, I start my things with with some slides that 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 address that that kind of issue that we need change managers to bring change in the society. So when we talk about change manager, we talk about leaders. So what's the difference between managers and leaders? Are they different? Are they same? So let's talk about them. So the managers usually they, 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 they use to promote stability while leaders press for change. That's the difference between the two. Leaders, they follow guidelines, systems, you know, discipline, Uh, sorry, managers, they, 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 they follow the book and they, they want and that's why, uh, you know, when you have meetings, you, you talk about them and they, they will be saying, they will be promoting stability while leaders have to bring change and only organization that embarrass both sides of that contradiction can thrive in turbulent times, the turbulent times that we are facing today. So, if we talk about leadership, Leadership is not mystical or mysterious. It's nothing to do with having charisma. Come on. It's, it's our other exotic personality traits. It's not a province uh, of a chosen few people. Nor it's leadership necessarily better than management or replace of it. Leadership, anybody can, can, you know, try to become a leader. And how can we really do that? Now, I give you one example. I'm sorry this slide is too crowded, but I, this is just published uh, yesterday that the world was giving examples of researchers versus political leaders. So they, they were advising the political leaders that they should follow the researchers, the scientists. Since this crisis, researchers are joining hand, working day and night to find a solution for the problem that we are facing. So we expect the same from the leaders. Uh, from our political leaders that they should be really thinking out of box. So this slide that tells you that many different kind of researchers, they have focused themselves on uh, different disciplined people. They have come together, they have joined hands and they are working day and night and they are trying to find COVID-19 solution to the problems. What I was going, uh, talking to you Uh, with a little pause that I said that the political leader should follow the researchers that they were behaving in the last, you know, couple of months. The researchers were not only from one country, from one religion, from one continent. They were across the globe 
for example uk china italy people scientists were working together engineers and scientists and they were trying to find solution to the problem so what we need to i wish that uh, the, the political leaders of the world they always say that they are working in the human interest rather than national interest if we do that whenever we think like that the humanity will survive otherwise if we always think about national interest only or on a particular group then we we will really be facing problems so now another slide that 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 i'm focusing you before i go into the real talk uh, that is that that this uh, article appeared yesterday again april 2 in the bottom of the slide you can see uh, so that how can we modernize biotechnology to fight against this virus number 1 number 2 what this is covid 19 what will happen if we have few years down the road covid 20 or covid 22 covid 25 are we ready for that as a pakistani nation or as a scientist as a human are we ready for ne next epidemic so this challenge should be taken into an opportunity and we should work in it so when we talk about biotechnology very quickly three types number one that we should all scientist academia uh, industry and the commissions like in pakistan higher education commission snt for god's sake let's sit together and we we focus it on number one number first thing that we need is the diagnosis in this case the first thing that you can quarantine somebody you have to know that whether that is carrier or not for example in this case when somebody gets it it's not that the he, not all the 100% people will get the symptoms of the disease only few of them gets it the rest are normal they they have some simple kind of flu and they cure quickly so that is the problem so but you have to isolate them for him it may be innocent it may not work that hard but he is a carrier and he can harm all the other people around him so that's what we need so the first thing is we need diagnosis two we need the uh, uh, treatments and vaccine two things one is vaccine the other is treatment so that to so we biotechnologists we have to come together and we have to work in this direction to find solution to all this problem so that we can address the future of uh, you know uh, coming uh, we have to sequence all the viruses related viruses uh, now the technology is available the synthetic biology i hope it is in the next slide yeah it is here the synthetic biology now they can generate uh, you know uh, express the protein to generate vaccine only in 3 hours you know a decade back it was needing 10 years to get a really a proper vaccine to be in the market or a drug to be in the market it it takes years and years but now because of this development in science specifically in biotechnology synthetic biology in a in a month you can have a small batch and a company in us is doing that and the same is with messenger rna vaccine that can go in far to 42 days in the in the in the market and then you know the 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 treatment but what i am going to talk to you today is little different than biotechnology that is my passion but today i am talking to you about another thing that is the alternative medicine herbal medicine the things that are around you the things that are in your kitchen that how can you really uh, safeguard yourself against any of such kind of disease so i'm um, as i said in the beginning i am the president of national council for tib which is a government body of uh, health ministry and uh, since i joined almost 5 years back this organization i took over uh, we had a vision and that is i wish to see this discipline as the world's most trusted ethical compassionate respected and admired health system and i wanted that my hakims my healers traditional healers they serve humanity with color blind commitment they don't look at the pocket of the patient but they look at the disease of the patient and they they first treat them and then if they can get a little bit of all this but i wanted to have knowledgeable skilled and caring hakims and today i can proudly say we have a number of them they have offered i have written to the prime minister of the country and the health advisor of the country that we offer we have uh, close to 65000 registered traditional healers in pakistan in in hikmat only in in tabib what you call it so you can use the services of them they they are well trained and they can guide the the people around them so first of all if you want to to see the primary health care system anywhere in the world so 
that is the, the, the motive of that is health and well-being and that how is it it has a multi-sectoral policies and action it empowers people and community it it gives primary care and essential public service functions as the core of integrated health services when i say integrated health care services here we come here we, we we talk about many different kind of health care systems so a whole society of the society approach to health and aims ensure the highest possible level of health and well-being and uh, their equitable distribution by focusing on people's need and preferences when we say preferences preferences of the individual what kind of treatment he wants the families what kind of treatments they want for their patient and the communities and there is that we have to really think about the alternative now we call it alternative but imagine 100 years back there was no no allopathy that strong everybody was treating themselves with the herbs around them so that is then unfortunately we as a pakistani we are import oriented society we we love imported things we 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 don't care of the things that are uh, around us so what we need is that we have to involve this traditional medicine and uh, that is we uh, are easily available that that is easily accessible to the people and that can be used by the marginalized and underserved people our prime minister said that he cannot do complete lockdown because of the poor people poverty that we are facing with so that is when the people are poor how can they approach you you can provide services in the mega city you have quarantines this and that what about the mountains what about the two third of your community that are living in the countryside interior sin balochistan and go and see tharpakar and all that so you have to have some kind of information for them that how can they treat themselves when they are facing with such kind of a disease or pandemics if they 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 have to treat them so a little bit of background of traditional medicine it is not only for pakistan uh, you know chinese i i am i'm seeing this because a recently uh, chinese scientist uh, they came to pakistan they had a high level meeting they are still in pakistan and in one of the meeting they said in wuhan they mainly treated their patient with chinese medicine and that is the herbal medicine so do you, i i i back to my own people also that let's think about it who defines herbal medicine as herbs herbal materials herbal preparations and finished herbal product that can be used uh, and their active ingredients are part of the plants that can be used to cure many diseases and it is not it is in many countries in 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 for example bhutan it is called gso gso barikpa in kyoto uh eh, sorry in, in in japan it is kampo in korea it has its name so it's in myanmar it's in sri lanka it's in thailand it's in uh, ayurveda is very famous in in india uh in china is there so everywhere so le- 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 let let let's think about it and how can i will be giving you some of the examples now if we want to have a goals of the care of the problem that we are facing with so number one we have to prevent complications and we have to optimize quality of life unfortunately i may in few slides be telling you why we are so susceptible to the diseases the pathogen that is coming basically two major reason that may be later on coming in one is antibiotic resistance we start antibiotic to our children right from the you know day one and two our food habit obesity the the burgers culture that we unfortunately we got it in it's not only for pakistan the world is really facing problem and they are saying that we are really in in grave uh, danger of using this this food habit that we are having so i will be telling you later about this a little bit so if we want to talk about goals of care we have to review and agree on management plan we have to assess key patient characteristics we have to have ongoing monitoring and support including many emotional well beings uh, their uh, glycemic uh, status biofeedback etc etc so we have to and we have to agree on a management plan when we say management plan it have small it should have smart goals you know the smart goals specific measurable achievable realistic um, uh, time bound if those kind of plan we have we can really treat our society with all this so when we talk about traditional medical system what i was talking to you was about the who world health organization you all are aware of it 
uh, they they had a very good document on traditional medicine uh, strategy what they call it 2002 to 2005 there was a meeting and i i make it quick for you uh, they had a policy for it they had a safety efficacy and quality assurance of herbal medicine they had an access issue to it that who can affordably easily you know with a with a minimum price can access to it and rationale use so that uh, everybody uh, knows it you know this is the era of uh, personalized medicine so they should be knowing the who which individual need what and when and how much little bit about science because i have i have a mix of both thing i am a scientist by profession biotechnology we call it genetic engineer so do you know that your body as a human you, you your body is more more than half of your body is not human what i want to say is that your dna the total dna of your body 43% of the total you know human cells are 43% only rest all microbes you have thousands and millions of microbes in your gut and same is in plants and every living organism they have gut that they save them they live in symbiotic relationship and they save them from various kind of diseases also but when you disturb your uh, you know microbiome that is in your body you are you know you you expose yourself to various kind of diseases like inflammatory bowel disease the parkinson uh, cancer drugs and various things can be you know and you can you can uh, using those microbes you can have drugs from it what they call it bugs as a drug that is also another thing that we have to really so when we consume herbs or plants or fruit in a way we can consume a lot of good probiotic for ourselves i give you another example here is the example of apple an apple carries 100 million bacteria and that is that you consume when you eat one apple you eat 100 million bacteria with it that's a pro- probiotic so that's why an apple a day keeps a doctor away it's not only that apple it's the microbe that they have it so there's a lot of discussion on it and uh, again it depends on uh, what kind of apple you are eating whether it's uh, organic whether uh, you know it's uh, uh, polished with some chemical so you have to be really careful what kind of apple you are e- eating and uh, what will be the result now coming to this uh, uh, this pandemic that we are having and the nature that we are having it's also linked with the biodiversity and i give you one example of another uh, of another microorganism which is candida auris that pathogen simultaneously emerge in three different continents and they are genetically they their clades were genetically distant and this is because of the climate change that we are expose ourselves now to it and that is another some day we can talk about climate change in relation to human health what kind of uh, impact it has on the human health <coughs> third whatever we have in the nature that has some importance and here i give you an example of an ants what we call it super ants that can give you next generation antibiotic because the present antibiotics are the bacteria the pathogen have developed resistance to it so that is that recently scientists have got a very good uh, next generation antibiotic from this ant so that is that uh, you need to to have it so when we talk about the healthcare system we need different player different stakeholders we need sponsors people who could really take burden of quality assurance of herbal ingredients and product that can you can you have to comply with the local regulatory guideline you have to ensure quality ensure good practices of manufacturing and you have to ensure the quality and then the herb extract that people are using that too should have quality uh, if you are exporting to multiple countries etc if you register yourself so you should be knowing all the international guidelines local guidelines and this should be scientific when you use herbal medicine rx etc it's a just a guideline that shows how uh, quality system of herbal products are how you extract uh you know uh, extraction of the herbs that you can uh, remove the uh, the the waste from it the debris from it and then you can really use it so now the question is why herbal medicine the first thing that i want to tell you is still 80% of the world population primarily specifically in the developing country like pakistan are still 
you know, using herbal medicine. And still they believe their, their, on their safety and their efficacy, their cultural acceptability, and they believe that they have lesser side effects as compared to the other uh, systems of medicine. And they can be used for anything like memory loss, like diabetes, like osteoporosis, like immune and liver disorder. These, these herbs have cure or treatment or help or, you know, for various kind of disease that you are. And now I give you a little bit uh, data of the global burden of disease, the problem that world is facing and the present coronavirus has a sort of impact because of that we were having. For example, the, the, the one of the disease burden that was lower respiratory infection was one of the cause. This is the paper published in 2016. And today, four years down the road, we had a corona and it mainly impacts respiratory infections. Two was diarrhea in young children, neonatal preterm birth, HIV, AIDS and malarias. Though we had found solution to that, but the problem that the world is facing, we still, you know, uh, are uh, the, the triads of trouble. Three troubles that I talk. One, obesity. Two, conflict. Three, mental illness. The, 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 the race of the humans for getting more and more the greediness and that has led to the conflicts that have led to the wars and that have caused a lot of problems to the poor people that have a mental illness in sort of competition. So the major problem that we are facing is the changing people's behavior and the circumstances that has direct problem that they, they, they have destroyed their immune system and they cannot fight infectious disease like Corona. The corona, if you have a very good immune system, you can really still, uh, you know, you can fight with it. And I then now give you an example of a physician, Avicina. You all may have known it. You can search it again. I got her. It's prize from UNESCO also, ethics prize of you, Avicina. So what he said, and that is, you know, long ago, uh, almost now, uh, 11, 1200 years ago, he said, most illness, even those which lead the sufferer to the specialist, arise solely from long continue, continued error of diet and regime. Two things, diet and regime. Your diet that you are consuming, that is the major cause, the diseases that you will be getting in future. Your children that whatever diet they are consuming today, that will have an impact of the, his lifespan coming, whether it's diabetes, whether there are other diseases that are there. So, and I've, I give you here a, another kind of data that poor diet is linked to one in five deaths in the world. Every five deaths that are there, uh, in, in, in five deaths, one is somehow directly, indirectly related to the po uh, poor diet, the diet, the food that we are having. And this, you can, you can uh, talk about, uh, you know, obesity, uh, and the, there are two things uh, that obesity level continue to have poverty as well as greed. Two things must take some of the blame. It's not just overeating, but it's not having enough money to buy the right sort of food. There are two things, it's not only overeating or having a lot of meat. It is also that you don't have good money to have a right kind of a food. You go and have fast food kind of a cheaper kind of food that you think you fill your stomach with. So that is the problem that we are having, you can have. And diabetes caused 1.43 million deaths in 2016 alone. So you call, you call it what, in Urdu, 15 lakh people? 14 lakh, 30,000 people roughly in 2016. Today it's more than that. It's almost 16 lakh people dies because of diabetes. And that the rise, you, you take data of 10 years, 31% rise in diabetic patient, 31%. And that is the leading cause of the death in the world that is there. And if you look at the cartoon that I'm showing in this slide, there is a queue for pills and surgery. There is nobody on the line where they tell you about the lifestyle change. So we, we, we don't want to change our lifestyle. We, we are not ready to change ourselves. We just use consume more and more of pills and surgery and those kind of things that we are forced with. So for future 2040, the major thing that you will be facing is obesity will be an economic and social burden of the world in future. That is, that is one of the cause that you, you should be knowing. In the year 2016, nearly 41 million people below age of five were obese, were overweight. 
41 million people. The obese population within past 40 years has tripled. पिछले 40 सालों में मोटापे के लोग तीन गुना हो गए. And the third thing is obesity is preventable. You can prevent it if you want. So that is that the, 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 you should be knowing and there is a more data about it that we are having. Uh, and uh, I, I just give you one example of the economy of the world that will be that obesity will account for 3% of the world GDP in the value of turn in having an economic impact of the US $2 trillion annually. That will cause you only one thing that is obesity. One major thing that I want to talk to you was human diet that caused catastrophic damage to the planet also. When I talk about this, you can avoid million of deaths not only, but you are, you, you, you are damaging the planet. And you know, when you a billion people in the world, they'd go hungry and another people, uh, two billion people eat too much. So if, if, if that is the thing, the, the people that are eating too much, obesity, heart diseases, diabetes is the faith, they will get it and that is you can also if you try the unhealthy diet if you control it that's which is responsible for 11 million avoidable premature deaths every year. So you have to think about global food system as a whole and if I talked about one thing that is in, in diet that is beef is the main culprit and if, if you think about it that five kilos of grain, only grain, not only the other thing that I'm talking, produce one kilo of meat. So, and that one kilo, the estimate is that uh, if you have one steak, 30% of that goes to the dustbin. You know, you the wastage of the food. So we as a human being really have to think uh, about it. So now finally, I'm talking about the safety of herbal medicine from prejudice to evidence. 100 years ago, everybody, almost majority of the population were using natural herb to treat themselves for all kind of diseases. And even today, whatever uh, medicine that you are having, majority, 25% of them, that came from the plant's origin, aspirin, artemisinin, ephedrine. So all of them, they come from, uh, their origin is plants. So the earlier people were using as a whole plant. So the third thing is, that Western medicine treatment is not satisfactory because of the adverse drug reaction. People die because of the drug reaction also. So huge data available on this. And the third thing is that the global market for herbal medicine now close to a trillion dollar. So that is uh, that you can work on it. Some people believe that these traditional healer Hakims, they are using, you know, uh, snails, they are using different things. Here I, I, I give you one example. This snail that I put it here, the, the modern medicinal clive that we get from here, it, uh, it, it is used and that is thousand time more potent than morphine. And you use it for your operations. And that comes from the advanced cancer stage patients in the allopathic medicine and the AIDS. When they are in advanced stages, this drug is only used and that comes from the snail. So if you didn't know it, Otherwise, if I tell you that you are injecting snail in your cell, you will be, you know, so that is where you, uh, and then I give you a few more examples from beers, the, this, uh, what you call it, beer in, in, in Urdu, beer, 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 anyway, beer, reach. Reach, so mm -hmm. thanks, uh, I got a friend here. So uh, it's not only online, I have some spectators also. So we, we can talk about it. So the medical benefit of that beer, you know, oh, from the gallbladders of the beer species, we, uh, of the polar and the black bear, we get a medicine which is used the bile uh, during pregnancy of women. And that is that dissolve the gallstones there and that prolonged the life of the patient and we only can get it from, from this black beer that we are having. So, third thing, you get this Ayurvedic medicine in India and they say 
that they have found cure from the herbs for dengue uh, fever. You know, the dengue that you are having in Pakistan too, we are facing this problem. Come on, man. But we don't want to believe it. And, we, and they are planning some $10 billion US dollar business on dengue alone from this Ayurveda in 2022. So, and I give you one more example. You may have heard about stem cells and stem cells that they are there. But now in Australia, uh, they are working on medicinal plant that they are doing tissue engineering and regenerative medicine from plants. There are two plant species that they, 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 they scaffolds we call it and they can help you to develop body's tissues and function of your bones, premature bones and that comes from these plants. And that is, you know, uh, f uh, better in some cases in the future would be in this discipline too that uh, we should be having and uh, these plants can be used not only in wound healing, in pharmaceuticals, but tissue engineering, developing your cells and the business now even uh, in next uh, three, four years will be 1.5 billion US dollar on this one discipline alone. And I should talk to you a little bit about when we eat plants, it is not only that plant that we are eating inside the plant like you have in your gut millions of microorganisms, same is with the plants. So sometimes that microbes that are within the plant, so when you consume the plant, that is probiotic for you, that helps you. So this is endophytic microorganism that we work on that can provide you phytohormones that can help you uh, with many things. And I give you here one example only. This is uh, Damasa in Urdu, Fegonia. We, uh, it's a long story, I'm cutting it short. One um, UK uh, scientist published a paper saying that this plant was bought from Karachi and it is used very good for breast cancer because this has this compound, etc. But when that specific name they publish, we told them that this is, uh, this is that paper. And uh, uh, I was in U.S. those days. I told him, this is not the species in Pakistan. And then we asked them to provide the species. They couldn't. They have used all of it. But we did then research of all the species in Pakistan of this genus. And we found that Pakistani species, which was there, uh, uh, that was very good for. And our people, our Hakims were using for thousands of years. <laughs> the same species. But we don't believe it. But when a UK scientist publishes in a high impact factor journal, we believe it. So here is some of the basics for an, uh, endophytic microorganisms. You can develop anti antibiotics from it, antiviral, you can, for corona, for example, uh, anti-cancerous, antioxidants, anti-diabetic agent from it. You can have biofuel. You can have many things from it. It's a slide that you can read it and you can find another thing. Last day I will be talking about a little bit, you know, nowadays people talk about nanobiotechnology or nanotechnology. The being the smallest is the best. So when we talk about all this, uh, my students now work on this also and we are trying to have some nanomedicine. Uh, specifically, one of the, our group, international group, we are working to find cure for corona also through nanobiotechnology that we will be using. What is nano? Your human hair is about 100,000 nanometer in diameter. So you imagine what, how small we are talking about. One here, the diameter of the hair is 100,000 nanometer. So we talk about one nanometer, you understand. And one red blood, one cell, in one, one drop you have thousands of cells. Within that one cell, it is 8,000 nanometer. Bacteria is 1,000 nanometer. Virus is 100 nanometer, so small. So we talk about it and we work uh, on this. There, uh, the, that is in the next, this century is the nano century. People will be having medicine from it, diagnosis from it. And we are trying to have these medicine from the medicinal plants. And today the business is 75 billion US dollar of the nano medicine that they are there. This is a simple mechanism of diagnosis and therapy. Uh, you can see in the slide that how can we the Plants nanotechnology, the novel approach that we have published this paper, one of my students who is working in China now, uh, we published this and we have all the details, how can we get nano medicine from the plants. Again, this can work in antibacteria, antifungal, antiviral, anti-cancer, anti leishmanial you name it. You will find solution to the problems, inshallah. And, and again, you can work in the environment, biodegradation and all other issues that uh, we will be doing that. So, uh, this is very important. And why is it important? This herbal, if you look at the data that we are having internationally, 
if you look at the allopathic growth of international medicine growth, it is 3% per year. If you look at the herbal growth, it is 5% per year. So in Pakistan, I'm advocating that let's put some resources in it and let's work on it to have a very good product that we can even export it. Pakistan, here I should tell you one thing which I, is very close to my heart, is the only country in the world that it stretches from zero meter sea level to 8,600 meter. Mount Everest is a little above it, but they don't have the beautiful kind of uh, uh, seaside that we have, the plains that we have. Nepal is only mountains, but we, we, Allah has blessed us with a beautiful country that we have. And that's why we have all kind of very good plants, species, animal, diversity of humans. And we have every kind of thing. So we, we, what we need is we need, we have to get benefit of it. Now, in the last few slides, I should talk to you about the antibiotic resistant bacteria. And that is why now this corona also has one of the problem for the world that the new bones resisting standard treatment that we are having problems. 200,000 new bones die each year because of the infection and because they don't respond to antibiotics. The, the, the resistance that the, anti, the, the uh, microbes have got it. So that is where uh, we, we have to really think about uh, on one side reduction of antibiotic, another side finding new uh, uh, fifth generation antibiotics that can you know, uh, help us uh, in uh, develop. So here uh, we use two English words for antibiotics. Uh, one is excess and excess. You know, excess, uh, A double C, E double S. Few people, they are poor, they don't have access to antibiotic. Others have ex too much money and they use or use the antibiotic. So excess and excess, that is where we have problem. And two, we, we, we use antibiotic everywhere in the animals, we, the, the milk that we are getting, the food that we are getting, the vegetables that we are getting. We are spraying different kind of, you know, uh, pest killers and all this. So there is where unknowingly we are using a lot of, you know, uh, antibiotic that, uh, and hormones and different kind of thing that we really, it's a mechanism here in this slide we are showing, you can uh, uh, later on see it. What is the circle of how from, uh, from food, from chicken, from even tomatoes, from, uh, you know, animals, milk, etc. Uh, how, how, how is this circulated? I should also talk about a little bit about diabetes. One of my uh, audiences here was talking about this, that uh, I give you one example, probably it's the next slide. Uh, no, it's a slide back after this, that uh, uh, it's really uh, diabetic drugs ride a bumpy road. We, we, we are in problem. And if you look at here, the data I'm showing to you uh, that uh, uh, in uh, 2000, uh, 15 years down the road, we will be having 592 million people diabetes. And that if you look at the data I have shown in, in this slide, it is from Eurasia, North America to South America, South Asia. Look at the percent that uh, the, the people that they will be diabetes. And here I show you a drug. This drug was used for many years, approved by FDA for diabetes. But here we come and we came to know that because of this drug, you were covering diabetes on one side, but you were getting heart failure and stroke because of it. And that, that, that uh, many people died because of this drug. And this was then removed from the shops. So there is that you should be knowing the, the problem that we are facing in the world. And uh, here is some, some kind of uh, data how the, this diabetes is going in the future, uh, what kind of humans uh, population will be facing diabetes, refugees, one million refugees live with diabetes in the world, one million people, three million internally displaced people that come because of climate or other, they are internally displaced, they are diabetes, 31 million new people displaced due to conflict and disasters diabetes, etc, etc. So this is a problem that we are. I give you one, one traditional medicine, cannabis, bung. We all, you know, China, they were using it 10,000 years ago. They were using this. Unfortunately, now internationally, they are getting a lot of drug out of it. But we, when we talk about it, people laugh it. That we are probably, we are talking about something, you know, to sleep. So we, in our shrines, etc., the people were using it. And look at this. 
This has aphrodisiacs properties. It has a lot of good things out of it. Even you can make carpets out of the, out of the uh, cannabis. And we have everywhere down the road in Islamabad, even right from here, everywhere. But we, we, we don't use it because, uh, again, we are import-oriented society. We don't have anything indigenous. We, we, we really don't work properly. So we talk about uh, the future perspective. It's more acceptable. Uh, now we have to integrate the modern technology like biotechnology, cell culture, etc. to it. And we have to uh, address the modern diseases that we are facing it. Uh, we should have preventive medicines out of it. And that is how it can work. Thirdly, we should, uh, I, let's, uh, I quote you Hippocrates. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine. You should eat such kind of food that is your medicine. And you should not be looking at the things, uh, the, the, the way we are doing so. Now, the human have to choose business as usual, a materialistic society, ignoring the future, no care of the things are. We should, the, the, the rich people should retreat into the fortress of the world of old values. Look at today that we, we, we are, people are locked down. Or we should have some sustainability with science and religion, everything in harmony. And that is how it will work. So, uh, I quote Avicina again. What he said, the knowledge of anything since all things have a cause is not acquired or complete unless it is known by its causes. So you should know even the cause of this uh, today uh, virus that we are having. So we, we have to really think about this, that how it works. And again, he presented seven doctrines of preservation of health. Uh, Avicina presented one, equilibrium of temperament, selection of food and drink, Evacuation effective, uh, effective matters, safeguarding the composite, purity of air that we uh, uh, respired, guarding against extraneous contingencies and a moderation in regard of movement of body, what we call it, sleep and wakefulness timings and all this. So, finally, what I want to talk to you is solidarity with the people. Uh, if you look at the slide, uh, uh, what Avicina said uh, some thousand years ago, I would rather have a short life with wide width rather than a narrow one long life with diseases and all this. So we should focus on quality of life. We have to focus on the poor and the most vulnerable population of the country and of the human that are really vulnerable, not only to climate change, but to the diseases, the pandemics that we are facing with. So we have to this wealth also should not be in few hands. They should go to the people and we should really be having a really redistribution system of the things that I have. When I talk about science, so science is the most ethical. There is an ethical, ethical obligation of emerging technologies to alleviate human suffering. Not to have science is the most unethical. So our responsibility is science is the future of the human being. And here again at the last I will be showing you uh, the managers and the leaders. Managers come on and control on the slide on the left and the leaders engage and align. Leadership is based on inspiration, not domination, on cooperation, not intimidation. And that is that we have to really work on it. And again, I quote you something that to you handle, when you handle yourself, use your head. When you handle the humans, use your heart. And that is if you want to have the greatest mistake that in the treatment of diseases is that there are physicians for the body and physician for the soul. I'm talking of a doctor of the body and physician of the soul, the, 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 you know, the religious leader, although the two cannot be separated. So we all have to spirituality and treatment and science, they have to go hand in hand. And that is that we, we will be, uh, now in China, there is a uh, there is a lot of discussion that we should be going to old civilization, our our old culture that will resolve current issues. So ro uh, leadership role in defining right from wrong, and that is that we have to really go back to think of the old culture that we were having, the community that we were living, the oath that we were having. Do not do no harm for the uh, the humanity, and that is how. If you look at the slide, all the data is there, and you can talk about it. So, uh, and I, 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 there were some kind of, you know, oath uh, the earlier period too for the, uh, for the people that they were treating human being 
that their personal characters as a physician, obligation towards patient, towards the community, obligation towards his colleagues, obligation towards his assistant. And that, look at this. This is very much true today. And if you look at this, the, the doctor, they are a doctor, they prescribe you tens of, you know, uh, tests that are not needed even. They give you medicine that you even don't need it. They can just treat you by some change of your diet or things. So that is where we should have some kind of, uh, you know, I'll give you one or two examples and I'll finish. And that is for the corona, preemptive. This is how our Hakims are really pre prescribing it. We have some local herbs. Uh, one is licorice, one is turmeric, uh, what do you call it, haldi. Uh, one is, uh, you know, kastishiri, miti, dana, kalvanji. They all, they mix it. And you have one gram in the morning, one gram in the evening. And uh, this will give you some kind of, if you don't have a sy sy uh, sym symptoms even, that will give you some kind of immunity that will help you uh, to, to uh, the disease. And if you have some symptoms, then there are some other medicine that you, you need to use it. I just, this, this slide sh show you in Urdu. Uh, I, I quote it Arastu Mushkilat mein gabrana nahi chahiye Sitare hamesha andere mein hi chamakte hain Sitara bane Or andero ko roshan ki jiye Or Ek aapko or I want to say with this picture that I have that It is not the strongest Of the species that survives Nor the most intelligent But the one most responsive To change So I started with change and I finished with change And I expect uh, that the, the, the last slide that is health does not always come from medicine. Most of the time it comes from peace of mind, peace in the heart, peace of the soul. It comes from the lafa and love. You don't need medicine. You need lafa and you need love. So the biggest concern for any organization should be when their most passionate people become quiet. Let's speak. Let's talk. And uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It was a pleasure to address you online. And uh, I will ask my colleagues that they make a system uh, that I could answer your questions also in future. If there were some mechanism, my friends were advising me to have some kind of a channel. So we will be having your questions and answers. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.